In the last video, we talked about what it meant for a function to be continuous. Uh, in this video, we're going to look at uh, what it means for a function to be discontinuous. What do these guys look like when your function is not continuous? Um, to, to start this off, let's just quickly recap what it means to be continuous. So we would say that a function is continuous at a point. We'll say x equals c if three things happen. Number one, uh, the bare minimum is that the limit as x approaches c for the function must exist. Um, that, that's a given. If you look over here at this graph over here, you see that the limit exists right here at c. And if it didn't, if it you know went like this on the left-hand side but went somewhere else on the right-hand side, that break in the graph would, would make it not continuous, obviously. So um, if the limit exists, it doesn't mean it's continuous. It just means that's one of the necessary requirements to be continuous. Uh, second of all, uh, to avoid having a hole right here and have your point defined somewhere else to where the limit exists but yet it's not continuous, we want to make sure that f of c exists because if there was no point defined at c at all it would not be continuous clearly. Now even if you had a point defined at c and even if the limit existed at c it could still not be continuous because these two things the limit and the function value may not be the same. So the last criteria is that the limit from part one matches or is the same thing as the function value in part two. So if this dot came down and filled in this hole, well, you'll see it would be continuous right here at C. So that, that's just a quick uh, definition of continuity. Now, what would happen if the first, the second, or the third criteria failed? Well, that, that's what we're going to look at a little bit closer here. The first type of discontinuity is called a removable discontinuity. And here's what it says. Redefining one point of f of x will make f of x continuous. So if you can redefine a single point, they allow you to change hypothetically one value and you can fix it and make it continuous. If it's almost continuous and you fix it by redefining one point uh, and it will make f of x continuous if you redefine that point, we call that type of discontinuity removable because you can remove the discontinuity by redefining a point um, hypothetically. Now there is another type to where if you redefine one point and it will not make f of x continuous no matter how you define that one point where the discontinuity is, that discontinuity is non-removable, it's not fixable. Now there's three places that we often see these types of discontinuities. Let me run through them real quickly. First off, removable discontinuity. This is often uh, what you get when you have a point discontinuity. We see these all the time. Here's what happens. You've got a function that's going right along, going right along, and then it's discontinuous at a point, thus the name point discontinuity, and then it continues on. Maybe it's not defined at all at C, maybe it's defined somewhere else at C, but either way, if you could redefine this one point right here, I think what I'd probably do is redefine that value at C to be here instead of up higher, then you've fixed it. You've made that a continuous function. If you could redefine one point and make it continuous, then that was called a removable discontinuity. All right, so just keep this one in mind right here, point discontinuity. All right, next up, uh, non-removable. There's two types of common non-removable discontinuities. First up is what we call a jump discontinuity. And these kind of look like this. You, your graph is going along, going along, and then it stops. It jumps, thus the name jump discontinuity, jumps somewhere else. Maybe it's defined here, maybe it's not defined here, maybe it's defined you know, for some other value other than where these holes are, but in any case it keeps going and there's a break right here. You see it's literally pulled apart. That's what we call a jump discontinuity. And then lastly we have what's called an infinite discontinuity. And this is a common type for that you see a lot with rational functions. These are the types that have asymptotes where your graph might look something like this. 
right? And you can see due to that asymptote, due to that infinite value that this guy approaches as you approach C, we would call this type of discontinuity an infinite discontinuity. Now, what's the commonality between these two graphs right here? Well, if I gave you a, a sticker, if I gave you a round sticker and I said, put this sticker anywhere you want to redefine one point at C and fix it, make it join together, make it to where you can draw it without picking up your pencil, um, you couldn't fix either one. I mean, the jump discontinuity, if you put the sticker here, it doesn't fix it. If you put it in the middle, it doesn't fix it. Uh, if you put it somewhere random, it doesn't fix it. Uh, same thing with the asymptote. Even if you define C to be right here, this part is still going towards infinity. That part is still going towards negative infinity. So we see the difference here between removable, like a point discontinuity, and non-removable, like jump and infinite discontinuities. Okay, so let's take a look at an example here. Here's one. Find and label all the discontinuities of this function here. So this is a rational function. Um, as we would probably guess, what we need to do first is factor these numerators and denominators to see, you know, uh, what what types of things may cancel or, you know, what things could give us division by zero. The numerator factors as x plus 5, x minus 2, and the denominator factors as x plus 1, x minus 2. All right, so we see a couple discontinuities here. Uh, we have a discontinuity at um, negative 1, and we have a discontinuity at 2. But now what, what types are they? Well, at negative 1, you see there's no other common factor for negative 1. So that'll give you division by 0. And for values very close to negative 1, you'll get a very, very tiny denominator, something that's almost 0. And the other expressions, like the numerator, are not close to zero. In other words, this whole fraction will get really, really big because the denominator is so close to zero. There's no common factors that will cancel this guy. So this would be one of those infinite discontinuities that has an asymptote that blows up at negative one. So this would be non-removable discontinuity. All right Now, on the other hand, if you look at the x minus two factors, you can't plug in 2 into the function f of x. f of 2 is not defined because you would get 0 over 0, which is no good. But other than at 2 specifically, you are more than welcome to cancel these factors because for x is other than 2, you get blank over blank, which cancels to 1. You just can't have 0 over 0 defined as 1. So uh, for every point other than 2, this is defined. So this would be one of those types that kind of comes up, has a hole, and then keeps on going. Just right here at 2, you know, there's some, some trouble, there's some problems. So this would be a removable discontinuity because you can remove the discontinuity, you can fix the discontinuity if you were to cancel these factors and redefine one point at 2 from being not defined to being defined as whatever this guy's y value would be when you plug in 2. So we have two different types here. This one's asymptotic. It's an infinite discontinuity. This is a point discontinuity. It's removable. So I went ahead and graphed it here, and we can see this being played out here. Uh, this first type back here at negative 1, sure enough, you can see very clearly the asymptote here at negative 1. Um, that's for sure a discontinuity. It blows up really big but on the other hand over here at two this is one of the uh, the negatives to these graphing calculators unless you zoomed in a lot which you could do I just didn't do it for this picture you could zoom in a ton into two and you would see a little blip on the screen like this but unless you were looking for it you likely would would not see it because it's just a little blip on the screen these pixels they hop over two they're probably showing you 1.7, 1.8, 1.9, 2.1, 2.2, 2.3. You can't even see that millimeter looking uh, tiny segment of a hole right here at two. It's just too small to see with your eyes. So 
graphing calculators could get you in a little bit of trouble with an example like this. But anyways, hope that helps you understand the two different types of discontinuities a little bit better, uh, removable and non-removable. Now somebody could ask you, where is a function continuous? And at its discontinuities, are those discontinuities removable or non-removable? We should be able to answer all of those questions now.